Hey guys how are you we are back with new fanfiction story, what if Naruto was became knucklehead devil and unpredictable relation with Rhea's movie. Damn it, Hirosenin, Bachan, you can't do this to me, a kid screamed, his most noticeable characteristics were his spiky, blonde hair, blue eyes, three whisker marks on each cheek, and the orange tracksuit he was wearing he was also a bit on the short side. The kid was in a predicament, seals ran across his exposed skin, seemingly restraining his movement as he wasn't moving an inch besides his mouth, he was laying within a complicated fuinjutsu circle, just outside the circle were two others, one of them was a large man with a mane of white hair, wearing a kabuki outfit, the other was a blonde with her hair and pigtails. She was also blessed with a hem of very large bust. We can and we will, Naruto, the woman declared, hiding the waver in her voice. Why though? The kid demanded. The man now responded sadly, you know why, Naruto, Akatsuki is after you, they are too powerful to underestimate, the council decided that sending you away would be for the best. We can fight them, Naruto immediately claimed before continuing desperately, you were going to take me on a training trip, Hiro Senen. Get me strong enough to fight them. My intelligence indicates Akatsuki will start moving in three years, that isn't enough time for me to train you to the point that you can take on 9s rank missing nin, Jiraiya explained despondently. So you are just going to send me away? Naruto questioned in outrage. Don't you get it, Naruto? This isn't just for the good of the village, we are doing this for you, Tsunade announced, tears brimming in her eyes as she clarified, we are going to send you to another world, a place Akatsuki won't be able to find you, you can live without having nine criminals after your life, you can build a life, a happy life, away from the elemental nations. I don't want that kind of life, Naruto stated passionately, I'm just going to find a way back, I'll figure out some way to return, I'm planning on becoming Hokage, I promised. You really are a good kid, Naruto, Tsunade muttered, a small smile on her face. But we have already taken measures to prevent that, Jiraiya claimed before informing Naruto, I placed a memory seal on you, it will permanently seal your memories, well, most of them, you should still remember basic things like your name and how to use your techniques, if certain memories are important enough to you, Yao leave and subconsciously remember them. Why you can't do that to me, Hiro Senen, Naruto whispered, a small waver in his voice at the thought of losing all his memories. Sorry, Naruto, but I am, Jiraiya said, not able to look Naruto in the eyes, as he crouched down to the circle, he announced, I also sealed the yin half of the Kaiubi into you from the Yandame's body, if anyone can find a way to handle that monster, it will be you, that should also ensure you can survive wherever you end up. Jiraiya finally inserted Chakra into the complex seal to start the process that would not only wipe Naruto's memories, but also send him to a whole different world, he also proclaimed honestly, for what it's worth you would have made a great Hokage, Naruto, whichever world is lucky enough to get you will be a better place for it. Goodbye, Naruto, I'll never forget you, and I'll make sure Konoha prospers because I know that is what you would want, Tsunade promised, tears now leaking down her eyes as the Fuinjutsu circle lit up. Bach and Iro Senen, Naruto whispered as his vision was filled with light, then Yuzumaki Naruto, Genin of Konoha, simply ceased to be. Naruto wasn't sure what was going on, everything was blank, he wasn't sure where he was or even who he was, he had just found himself waking up here with no proper explanation, bits and pieces of information were floating through his brain, but he was seemingly unable to piece them together to form a coherent picture. It was dark, the buildings were unfamiliar, and the people all spoke another language when he tried to ask them any questions, all he was capable of doing was stumbling around, trying to put his mind in order, a task that was proving incredibly difficult, it was like he was missing a few pieces of the puzzle. He was so confused he acted on instinct when he saw something about to occur, some lady had stepped in front of one of those really fast metal carriages, a really big one, hearing some loud bass from the carriage and a scream of the lady, once she realized her position, he acted on instinct, moving with inhuman speed, he moved to push the lady out of the way before she was hit, he succeeded. And then he was hit, Naruto felt his body break under the force of the collision with the metal carriage, he was then sent flying, his body skipping across the pavement several times before coming to a stop. Despite the pain flooding his mind, he was still capable of hearing the screams of the people around him, his blurry vision recognized as several people crowded around him, panicking at the condition of his body and the unfamiliar people, Naruto struggled to his feet, several people tried to push him back down, whispering reassuring things to him. Naruto wasn't capable of recognizing that in his current state though, and instead perceived the hands as trying to trap him, struggling as much as he could, he managed to break away from the weak people that were trying to restrain him, he fell down as soon as he started walking though, his leg broken, repeatedly he tried to get up and escape. And each time he was forcefully brought down by his broken leg. 
it was only when a sudden surge of heat spread throughout his body that something changed, feeling his leg miraculously stitched together in moments, he was off, the energy didn't leave him either, allowing Naruto to quickly outpace his concerned followers, the energy was both exhilarating and terrifying, Naruto felt so powerful, but there was some inherent sense of danger to the energy. It was dark and angry, and honestly gave him a sick feeling in his stomach. Running around wildly, Naruto finally stumbled on a park, some sense of safety seemed to come from the side of the trees, running within the trees, he finally allowed himself to slow down, coming to a stop, he leaned against a tree in relief. The relief didn't last, with the energy no longer being used for something, it was building, growing stronger and stronger, it was actually starting to burn, it wasn't visible, but Naruto was starting to feel pain from the energy, grasping his stomach at the pain, he focused on suppressing it, it wasn't easy, the energy seemed to have a will of its own, fighting against him. Eventually Naruto gained the advantage though, the energy was slowly being forced back. Stop in the name of the Grimory clan, surrender or else. Surprised by the voice and the fact that he understood it, Naruto looked up, he soon found who the voice belonged to, apparently an entire group had approached him when he was trying to suppress the weird energy, the one who spoke and appeared to be the leader was a girl with long red hair that appeared a few years older than Naruto, next to her were three others. The girl with long black hair done up in a ponytail, who appeared roughly the same age as the redeed, a blonde slim male who was wielding a sword, the final person was a very petite girl with white hair who appeared to be somewhere around the same age as Naruto. What mainly caught Naruto's attention was the sword in the blonde's hand, the weapon made Naruto call upon his instincts, Naruto instinctively tensed in preparation for battle. Which seemed to be what the energy wanted, Naruto in attention and preparation for battle allowed it to surge, the pain centered in his stomach forced Naruto to groan and bend down to grasp at his stomach, it was too late though, the energy was now visible, leaking out of his navel, the orange energy grew to let encompass Naruto's entire body, forming some sort of energy cloak. It eventually formed a tail extending from his tailbone. Even worse than the pain was the wave of anger and aggression Naruto was subjected to, eventually the adrenaline overpowered the pain, forcing Naruto to stop grasping his stomach, he then lifted his head to look at the group facing him, who seemed surprised and bewildered by his transformation, opening his mouth, Naruto roared. Dry Aya. The roar was downright bestial, it wasn't the type of sound a human should make, it was the roar of an animal or monster. And it thoroughly unnerved the group opposing him, they all took a step back, and Naruto took that small opportunity to charge, the armed blonde was the first to respond, charging forward with great speed, he swung his sword at Naruto's midsection, unfortunately the energy was boosting Naruto's speed, and he was capable of dodging, after leaning out of the way, Naruto just charged forward. A simple body check by Naruto sent the blonde flying. Right after the blonde was sent flying, Naruto was struck by thunder, his muscles contracted painfully, but the energy seemed to dampen the shock, it also allowed him to recover quickly, tracing the source of the thunder to the ponytail girl, Naruto charged at her, before he could reach her, the petite girl jumped in front of him, not at all threatened by the little girl before him. Naruto just threw a now clawed hand at her, the girl responded by catching it with her hands, and to Naruto's shock it worked, stopping his strike with an unbelievable level of strength for such a little girl, she only slid back a few feet, using his shock against him, she pulled him in, while simultaneously throwing a punch towards his midsection, acting on instincts. Naruto bent down to pull his midsection back, he also grasped at her arm to stop her punch, he barely succeeded, her punch came to a stop just an inch from his stomach. The two were now in a stalemate, each had one arm holding back the opponent's strike, while trying to hit their opponent with the other, their arms were shaking from their contest of strength, Naruto's enhanced strength against the unbelievable strength of the girl. Naruto gained the advantage for another reason entirely, pure mass, despite the ridiculous strength of the girl, she was light, grunting, Naruto proceeded to lift the girl off the ground entirely, now helpless in the air, Naruto looked at the thunder user, roaring, Naruto chucked the girl at the larger girl like a projectile, Ponytail managed to catch the small girl without being bowled over. But she was clearly off balance. Before Naruto could even think of taking advantage a crimson energy crashed into his side, rolling with the impact, he quickly regained his feet, he wasn't unharmed though, the orange jumpsuit he was wearing had been incinerated by the energy on his left side, and he had a few light burns. Naruto quickly looked at the culprit, the red-haired girl, the girl seemed shocked that Naruto had recovered so quickly, roaring in anger, he charged her, she concentrated as a weird red circle sprang up before her, the blast of the deep crimson energy burst forth, instead of dodging, as would be logical, Naruto met it head on, he crossed his arms before him. Protecting himself slightly from the impact, grunting from the power behind the strike, the orange energy reacted, concentrating even further, the crimson energy was pushed back by the orange energy, Naruto threw his arms out with a roar, and the crimson blast was deflected into a tree, which was completely obliterated, the red-haired girl was astonished at the event. 
and was completely open when Naruto jumped at her, tackling her to the ground, Naruto straddled her, one hand holding both her wrists above her head, the other reared back in preparation of ripping out her throat with her claws. Except he hesitated. The bloodlust Naruto was feeling was unreal, he wanted to rip out her throat, he wanted to tear her jugular open with his teeth, he wanted to feel her blood on his skin, he wanted to taste it. And yet, he hesitated. He was gazing into her eyes, he could see the terror there, no, he could feel her terror, like he was experiencing it, himself he didn't want to do this, he didn't want to end a life, he didn't want blood on his hands. The sudden burst of empathy was like a bucket of cold water for Naruto, the adrenaline and bloodlust fled, and the energy quickly dwindled down to nothing, Naruto quickly recoiled from the girl, releasing her hands. A moment of weakness of taken advantage of, from behind Naruto felt two arms wrap around his neck, the arms started to choke him, the strength telling that it was the small girl, Naruto struggled, but it was fruitless, not only had the orange energy faded to be replaced by exhaustion, but the girl had his back completely, not only were her arms under his chin completely to constrict his throat. But she also wrapped her legs around his waist to fix herself to his back, between Naruto exhaustion and the choke, he only held out for a few seconds, he then felt the darkness embrace him. Rr, but you, you are still here. If I didn't know better it'd say you have a crush on our little mystery boy, a teasing voice pointed out. The speaker was the ponytail girl, a very attractive girl, her black hair was extremely long, done up into a high ponytail with an orange ribbon, her eyes were violet, her figure was well curved, except for her chest which was above average, her name was Himajima Akeno. You know that isn't the case, Akeno, was the reply from the other conscious person in the room. This girl was the aforementioned Ritid, she was clearly not Japanese, taller than the average Japanese girl, her hair was a beautiful crimson color, her eyes were a mesmerizing blue with just a hint of green flawless skin, combined with perfectly balanced facial features, gave her an almost inhuman beauty, her figure was relatively equal to Akeno's, Ria's Gremory was her name. Well yeah I've barely left this room in the past four days, but you, why the interest in our mystery boy? Akeno questioned lightly, disguising her interest. The only other person in the room was unconscious, the blonde hair made it obvious it was Naruto, he was in a bed, the white sheets, walls, and gown all confirming he was in the hospital. I think the reason behind my interest in him is obvious hess interesting, Rhea stated simply. Everything had been ordinary for Rhea's before the boy showed up out of nowhere, she had just finished her first year at Kuo Academy, in the human world, she had been preparing for to begin her second year when the energy had appeared, it had been like someone was calling her out, the energy was that obvious, gathering her peerage together, Rhea's had gone to confront the challenger. The one responsible had not been what she had been expecting, she had found a boy who appeared to be 13 or 14 he was also been a bit on the short side, he had seemingly been in some sort of pain, she had challenged him, still believing that he was calling her out, instead her challenge only seemed to set him off, forming that weird energy cloak he had charged. Remembering the fight caused Rias to shiver slightly, that hadn't been like any fight she had been in before, no pre-fight talking, no planning beforehand, no breaks in the action, it had been a rush of fighting, the entire fight had lasted maybe half a minute, it was probably the most terrifying fight she had ever been in, the boy facing her and her peerage, had fought like an animal, no tactics. Just rushing forward with pure power, her peerage simply hadn't been prepared to fight an opponent like that, they had been overwhelmed, even if it was mainly due to their surprise. It was a miracle nobody had been hurt, the only one to have any real injuries was Yudo, the body check had received, had dislocated his shoulder and bruised a number of ribs, that was easy for Rias to fix though, she hadn't even needed to strip to allow greater skin contact, holding hands was enough for such minor wounds, at least for a devil. After Kaneko managed to choke him unconscious, they took him to the hospital, it was a special ward for supernatural beings, he would be treated and guarded there. Something else was what affected Rias the most though, she whispered out softly, he spared me, Akeno. I know, Rias, Akeno replied, grimacing at the thought, they had been overwhelmed, and Rias herself had been nearly killed, that was an uncomfortable thought for the entire peerage, to know they had failed to protect their king was a blow to their pride, and caused a flicker of panic to form in their chests, at the thought of Rias being killed. It was even worse for Rias, she had stared up at her opponent as he prepared to rip out her throat, to have one's mortality shoved in their face like that was a deeply unnerving experience, even worse than that was when he stopped, he hadn't gone through with it, he had her life in his hands, her hopes and dreams, her future, he had it all in hands, he could have crushed it, yet he spared her. He had her life in his hands, and he gave it back, that forged a connection. I can't simply leave him alone, I saw the emotions in his eyes, the confusion and helplessness, he spared my life, the least I can do is try to help him in any way I can, Rhea stated seriously. If that is what you think, but you, Akeno replied casually, sitting down next to her, Akeno looked at the unconscious blonde as she asked, what have you found out? 
Sighing, Rias crossed her arms as she answered, very little and yet a lot, it seemed he had been hit by a semi just a few miles away, he was apparently severely injured, but he still managed to stand up and run away, some people claimed they had seen him beforehand, said he looked confused and lost, several also claimed he was speaking another language. In a hunch I asked the doctors here to examine his mind, they found it fragmented, signs of magical tampering of some kind. That's very serious, Akeno commented seriously. Spells that affect the mind were dangerous, simple memory modification was okay, erasing or supplementing a day or two was generally harmless, anything more wasn't as easy, the mind was a very complex structure, you can't simply take parts out or you risk it all coming down. I know, whoever did it knew what they were doing, at least to a certain degree, no permanent damage was sustained, or at least the doctors believe so, major tampering like this leaves the mind in chaos though, rational thought processes are temporarily messed up, Rias explained, looking at the boy sadly, she elaborated, he was probably hopelessly confused when we confronted him. Running on pure instinct, the doctors placed a sleep charm on him, so that he would stay unconscious for three days, they hope his mind will have reorganized itself in that time, they removed it several hours ago, but there is no way of guessing when hell wake up, his body is fine, the mind is what is recovering, with no way of checking his mental state, we won't know when hell wake up. I see, Akeno muttered softly, thinking to herself, she finally asked, why is his body fine? Wasn't he hit by a semi? We weren't entirely sure, Rias admitted before informing Akeno, we believe that energy he used is responsible for his swift recovery. Have the doctors found out what that was? No, Rias immediately said with an irritated sigh, the energy itself feels like that of a yaokai, not exactly though, so we can't judge it exactly, he is entirely human though, so it definitely wasn't his own energy. The sacred gear? Akeno suggested thoughtfully. We aren't sure, they don't exactly have the equipment to do proper scans, but basic reports don't seem to indicate he is a sacred gear possessor, Rias answered, sounding confused herself. Then how does he have an energy that doesn't belong to him? Akeno asked in bafflement. That's the million dollar question here, Akeno, Rias said with a shrug. Ufufufu, he is interesting, Akeno remarked in amusement, looking at Rias, she questioned, are you thinking of recruiting him to your peerage? It'd be lying if I claimed I hadn't thought about it, Rias confessed with another shrug, her eyes then grew harder, turning more calculative as she clarified, but I can't be sure, there are too many unknowns currently, his powers are in question, as well as his personality and history, he can't even be sure had except, it doesn't help that we fraught him a few days ago. Right now I simply don't know enough to make a decision. I guess that is true, Akeno stated in understanding, looking at him, she asked, has supposed to be waking up soon, right? In a few hours, yeah, why? Rias answered simply. Pause I think Hess waking up right now, Akeno pointed out, pointing at the boy. True to her words, Naruto was starting to twitch, eyes fluttering, they finally opened to reveal his baby blues, blinking blankly, he slowly turned his head to observe his surroundings, naturally his eyes soon focused on Rias and Akeno. Who are you? Naruto asked bluntly. Taking the slight rudeness in stride, Rias answered in a calming voice, my name is Rias Gremory. Im Himijima Akeno, Akeno pitched in herself. Ah uh, hello, Naruto finally said after a few moments of wondering how he should respond. Hello, what might your name be? Rias asked slowly since he was very clearly still confused. Um, Yuzumaki Naruto I think, Naruto replied, lifting a hand to scratch at his head awkwardly. Rias raised her eyebrows in surprise before repeating, you think? Scratching the back of his head sheepishly, Naruto announced, yeah, I think that's my name, it sounds familiar, but I can't remember a whole lot. To find a whole lot, Rias requested stiffly, not liking where this was going. Well, I don't really remember anything, I found myself lying in an alley, I got hit by one of those metal carriage things, after pushing a woman out of the way I think I then fraught you two along with two others, otherwise nothing besides some vague feelings, Naruto explained slowly, not understanding it himself. Well that complicated things. Rias walked into the old school building calmly, class had just ended for the day, walking just behind her was a Keno. Reaching the occult research club room, Rias opened it as she automatically asked, have you been studying, Naruto-kun? Yes, Rias C.H.N., a bored voice replied slowly. Rias surveyed the room with a vague sense of amusement, the club room had gone through a few changes, her own desk and the couches were unmoved, but one wall now had another desk pressed up against it, the desk had a mess of papers spread out on it, but it was currently unoccupied, the occupant was instead laid out on one of the couches. Raising her eyebrow, Rias pointed out skeptically, really? because it looks like you are sitting around doing nothing. I'm just taking a break, Rias Chan, Naruto claimed indignantly, not getting up. You seem to take a lot of breaks, was Rias' counter. Rolling his eyes, Naruto gestured towards the desk and told her, I managed to do it all, check yourself. 
Riaz did just that, moving over to the desk she swept up the papers, she then quickly rifled through them, they were Japanese language papers, and true to his words all of them were filled out, even if Riaz was able to spot a few errors. Six months had passed since Riaz and her peerage had fraught the enigmatic blonde, after he woke up and revealed he had amnesia, Riaz had gotten a doctor, for a week she had done her own thing, she then returned, hopeful that the doctors had solved the problem they hadn't, the doctors had run numerous scans on Naruto's mind. And had come to the conclusion that someone had magically sealed his memories, it was actually impressive, in a sick kind of way, to seal away all of a person's memories without actually damaging their mind was no easy feat, it had left Naruto in a precarious state though, memory seals rarely break entirely, they can leak for lack of a better word. Particularly strong memories can be accessed to a certain degree when certain related stimuli are experienced, so it was possible that Naruto would regain a few precious memories over the years, but that was it, the chance of him regaining his former life was practically non-existent. Rhea simply hadn't been able to leave him in that state, he didn't have any family or friends, he didn't have a source of income, he didn't even speak Japanese, he had been like a child that hadn't ever been outside before. So she took him in and started working to make him a self-sufficient individual, the first thing she had done was start teaching him Japanese, it wasn't easy, not only was Naruto not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed, but Riaz wasn't exactly able to teach him herself. It would have been far easier if he had just become a part of her peerage, all devils have a passive ability called language, it allowed devils to speak with anyone, and both participants would perceive the conversation to be occurring in the language they are most familiar with, such as Riaz. She couldn't teach Naruto Japanese because she actually perceived any conversation she conducted to be occurring in devil speak, technically, she didn't even know Japanese, she knew the written language, because language didn't cover written forms of languages, but that was it, language was an essential ability for devils, since one of their main duties involved forming contracts with humans. Language would allow any devil to communicate with anyone, it would have also helped Naruto, who spoke a language no one could identify, adjust to his current life. Unfortunately, he hadn't accepted Rhea's offer, his exact words were, listen, lady, I don't know where I am or even who I am, I don't want to be making any life-altering decision, until I know what the fuck is going on, it was actually a reasonable decision, taking the time to make an informed decision was a smart move. Still complicated things though, until Naruto learned Japanese he was restricted to conversing with those who had language or a similar ability, so devils and other supernatural creatures, right now Naruto was living in the old school building with Riaz, incapable of going outside until he was able to converse with other people. Six months of dedicated effort had left him around elementary school level, so he was getting better, enough that Riaz let him go outside, as long as he was accompanied by a supervisor, the goal was to get him to a high school level in time to have him become a first year alongside Kaneko though, already half the school year was over, so they only had five months or so. Did you double check your work like I asked? Riaz asked, eyeing the mistakes in his work she spotted. Eh, Naruto said, looking away while scratching his cheek awkwardly. Sighing, Riaz told him softly, it'll forget about it this time, but don't make a habit of it, you are improving, but you still have a way to go, you can't drop the ball now. I get it, I get it, Naruto grumbled out, he was grateful for all that Riaz was doing for him, but studying day in and day out was tiring. Naruto-kun, Akeno spoke up suddenly, she was returning from the side room that was used as a kitchen, giving Naruto a too wide smile, she asked, you weren't foolish enough to eat everything in the pantry again, were you? Naruto started sweating at that, Naruto had learned about Akeno's unique tastes, and he was not thrilled by it, he especially didn't enjoy how Akeno had developed a fondness of teasing him, anything to make him uncomfortable, whenever he actually did something to provoke her well, it wasn't pretty. Yufufufu, it seems you didn't heed my words last time, Naruto-kun, didn't I warn you what will happen if you ate all the food again? Akeno questioned, her smile turning a slight bit scarier, licking her lips sensually, she continued, it looked like you need to be punished, Naruto-kun. Riaz just sighed at the turn of the conversation, it wasn't the first time this had happened, Akeno was the unofficial cook of the club and didn't appreciate when people interfered in that, something Naruto frequently did, their initial examination of Naruto showed signs of malnutrition, nothing recent, but clearly as a young child he hadn't been well taken care of. That interferes with a person's growth, luckily the doctors knew a process to negate any damage, an unfortunate side effect was an increased appetite, as the body was basically working overtime to rebuild itself, Naruto was clearly a very voracious individual normally, with his appetite enhanced even further his stomach turned into a black hole. When Naruto started craving food head go through everything that was available if no one was around to stop him, considering he was confined to the old school building, Akeno's pantry became a frequent victim. 
at least the treatment was working, Naruto had grown quite a bit, previously he had been on the short side for his age group and he had been rather scrawny, not to say he had been fragile, he had an unusual level of explosive power and durability in that body, especially for a human, it hadn't changed the fact that he wasn't the best physical specimen before, at least aesthetically. That had changed quite a bit, he had gained no less than 7 inches in the last 6 months, and he had filled out to create a more muscular frame, at this rate, he would be taller than Ria's in a few months. Escape Plan Delta, Naruto declared suddenly, he created 5 clones, the clones shot at Akeno, Akeno took a step back in shock at the apparent attack, but the clones came to a halt in front of her, they then made some hand seals before calling out in unison, reverse harem no jutsu. A puff of smoke engulfed their forms before clearing to show that the clones had each changed into another form, all of them very attractive males, they had varying features to suit the many different types, they were also naked, only a puff of smoke preventing the scene from turning X-rated. Run away, the real Naruto called out as he jumped out the open window, both Akeno and Ria's were too stunned to stop him. It didn't last long, while the technique succeeded in surprising the two, it failed to succeed in another field, no nosebleed or awkwardness, not even a blush, Ria shook her head in exasperation, and Akeno just stared at the now awkward clones blankly. Really? Akeno asked in a deadpan. The transformed clones looked at each other in bewilderment before one gathered up enough courage to reply back with a shrug, we expected you to blush and drool, maybe even a nosebleed. Sorry, but I have a very specific type, none of you fit it, Akeno claimed bluntly. If you have a very specific type, then why are you always messing with the boss? One of the clones demanded in outrage. Because Naruto kun's my type, Akeno stated simply, licking her lips sensually, she continued, his reactions when I tease him are so cute, he gets all flustered, I can't wait till I get the chance to really cause him some pain. Her words caused all the clones to shiver, Naruto was not an M, one clone even informed Akeno bluntly, that is so disturbing, the clones then all popped at once, their job done. You really need to stop teasing him like that, Akeno, Ria's pointed out calmly. But, but you, his reactions are so deliciously adorable, I think I'm getting addicted to him, Akeno exclaimed with a beatific smile. I really hope you are joking, Ria's claimed with a sigh, straightening, she ordered Akeno, go get him, Akeno, don't get too into it either, I want him back before nightfall. Naruto could be a slippery bastard when he wanted to be, he was practically impossible to catch between his unusual stealth capabilities, his clones, and his inhuman stamina, even if he knew better than to leave the forest covering part of the campus, he could probably hide for hours if he wanted to, thankfully, he typically allowed himself to be caught before it came to that. As long as Akeno didn't freak him out too much. Understood, but you, Akeno said obediently, jumping out the window herself. Left alone, Ria sighed as she took a seat at her desk, things had gotten much more excitable since Naruto arrived, not that it was a bad thing, it was nice, if exhausting, Naruto was a handful, of that there was no doubt, he was nice though, and was never opposed to helping them when he could, he helped pass out flyers with his shadow clones, and he was usually up for a spar. Naruto's capabilities had surprised the group, while they had known he wasn't a normal human from their fight, they had figured the orange energy was the source of his power, apparently, it wasn't, even without using the weird energy, Naruto was a more than competent fighter, his physical capabilities far exceeded the norm for humans, Ria's knew that humans were able to become strong. Exorcists and magicians were the main examples, but some legendary heroes were supposedly of similar levels to ultimate class devils or even the Mayu, Ria's hadn't ever experienced such a powerful human herself though, Naruto was the first, he was fully capable of matching devils, physically, his actual skill in unarmed combat wasn't as impressive, but he was learning from his spars against Kaneko. Even more amazing were his techniques, he was capable of making solid clones and undergoing physical transformations, a limited repertoire, true, but they weren't sure if that was all he knew, he just randomly did them one day during a spar with Yudo, when they asked him about them, he just scratched his head and said they popped into his head, who knows what else he might know, but not remember. Even if he didn't pull any more techniques out of his ass, there were still possibilities, Kaneko had managed to shed some light on his techniques, he was using chakra, his very life force, while all species were capable of using chakra if they trained intensively, Yaokai had an instinctive control over their chakra, they used that control to use Yujutsu. Considering how Naruto was capable of using chakra, it was likely he could learn Yujutsu, it wasn't much use now, since they didn't know any Yujutsu, even Kaneko wasn't capable of using any but it did mean Naruto had a potential path to grow stronger in the future. Overall, Naruto was quite a fighter, he could probably beat Kaneko or Yudo if he used his shadow clones extensively, Ria's and Akeno would probably only be able to force a stalemate, those clones made Naruto a damn pain to actually finish, this was all without that orange energy they witnessed him using in their first fight. 
Naruto had no idea what they meant and hadn't been able to draw upon it since, if he ever learned to use it, he would become even more powerful. It all made Ria's desire Naruto in her peerage even more, maybe as her rook, or possibly a pawn, mattered on how many pieces he was worth, Ria's had refrained from asking him to join her peerage again though, despite six months having passed, she didn't want him to get the wrong idea if she brought it up too much. Naruto might fall under the impression she was just doing this in an effort to recruit, while she definitely wanted him to join her peerage, she would accept if he chose not to, even if he didn't join her peerage, she had gained a friend and ally, she still hoped he would join though. Even if he always ate all their food. We're back, but you, I brought our little runner, Akeno announced as she stepped into the room along with a pouting Naruto. The job, Akeno, Ria's remarked, sit down you two, considering Naruto can eat through our food, there aren't any snacks, so we'll have to go without. Naruto chuckled awkwardly, especially when someone growled at him, Naruto looked at the culprit with a raised eyebrow, Taoju Kaneko was a very small girl, looking like an elementary school student, she had unique white silver hair that was cut short in a bob cut, besides two shoulder length strands that framed her face, her eyes were more yellow than hazel. She was wearing the Kuo Junior High School uniform, Kuo had a series of school in the district, a junior high school, a high school, obviously, and a university, they all had different campuses, but were all owned by the same group, Devils. She also wasn't pleased with him, she was outright glaring at him, growling a bit too, a second growl from her stomach joined the first, grabbing her stomach, she grumbled irritably, stupid gluttonous blonde. Naruto just smirked as he retorted immediately, sorry, but at least the nutrient are going somewhere in my case, Ms, eating but not growing. Obvious not the brain, Mr, Whiskers. Sorry, but I can't hear you down there, Chibi. Chibi? Kaneko repeated, her eyes twitching in anger. Everyone else present sighed as the two continued trading insults, this was typical, Kaneko ate plenty herself, between her and Naruto, Akeno usually cold make enough for both, that meant they were often competing for food, Kaneko's sharp tongue didn't help either, Naruto just fired right back. Although it wasn't a bad relationship, the opposite actually, the two often sparred, and Kaneko even used her extensive martial art knowledge to touch up Naruto rough fighting style, if anything it seemed like a playful rivalry, their similar age had seemingly allowed them to foster a sense of companionship, despite the two having rather different personalities. Sit, Naruto, Ria's ordered sternly. Shrugging, Naruto did just that, instead of sitting next to Kaneko and risking having her pinch him or something with that ridiculous strength as payback, he sat next to Yudo. Yudo was a good-looking boy a year older than Naruto, with blonde hair, gray eyes, and a slim build, he was better looking than Naruto could probably ever hope to be. Naruto wasn't particularly close to Yudo. they sparred a bit, but Naruto never felt particularly close to the knight, Yudo was polite and nice, but there was a certain distance there, Naruto suspected it was because he wasn't part of Ria's peerage, there was some sort of barrier there preventing the two from becoming actual friends. Okay, now that everyone is here, Ria started, looking at Naruto, she told him, Naruto-kun, Yao will be going with Akeno to buy groceries. Eh? Why? Naruto demanded, panicking at the thought. Because you ate all the food in the first place, Ria stated like it was obvious, Akeno is the cook, so Shell naturally go, Shell needs someone to help her carry everything, since you forced this, it is only natural you be that person. Be but, she scares the crap out of me, Naruto declared, pointing at Akeno like she was some scary monster. Do bad, Ria's replied instantly, no sympathy in her tone. Ufufufu, let's have fun, Naruto-kun, I won't bite, Akeno claimed teasingly, she quickly added, maybe I'll go clothes shopping as well, I'm sure I strong guy like Naruto-kun won't mind carrying a few extra bags, Ufufufu, it will be my first time having a boy carry my bags for me. Akeno, this is grocery shopping, not a date, Ria's announced firmly. Can't it be both? Akeno asked after a pause. No, just groceries, I expect you back within two hours, Ria said, completely unbending. Ara ara, could it be but you don't like the idea of my going on a date with Naruto-kun, jealousy, perhaps? Akeno teased with a smile. Ria's didn't even deign to give a response, she instead looked at Kaneko and Yudo before informing them, you two can do what you wish, we won't be attending clients tonight, spar, train, do homework, or even sit at home playing games, your choice. The two nodded thankfully, while attending clients wasn't particularly difficult, it was rather tiresome after a while, a break to do what they wanted was always nice. Unfair, they get a break while I have to shop with the crazy sadist, Naruto grumbled to himself, displeased with the turn of events. We should get going, Naruto-kun, I'll have to satisfy myself by making you carry a lot of groceries, Akeno stated as she grabbed the back of Naruto's shirt and started to grab him, she paused briefly, sending a look at him with that too wide smile as she continued, I also heard what you called me, crazy sadist, poor poor, Naruto-kun I haven't even showed you my real sadistic side yet. It'll make sure to educate you soon. 
That freaked Naruto out even more. So you got a new peerage member? Naruto asked in interest as he walked beside Ria's through the old school house. Ria's and her peerage had just returned from the underworld, the Japanese school year started in April, over the year they had three main breaks, spring and winter break, which lasted two weeks, and summer break, which lasted six weeks, nine months of the school year had passed, which meant winter break had rolled around, Ria's had decided to return to the underworld for the break. Naruto had unfortunately been left behind, since he wasn't a member of Ria's peerage and a human, it was natural that he not accompany them, Naruto had been left with plenty of food and money to buy more, when he inevitably ate through it all, Naruto cold and denied it had been a lonely two weeks. Ria's had just returned, Naruto had been asleep, since it was very early morning on the last day of the break, and she had just woke him up, she was now enlightening him as to all that had occurred. Ria's nodded as she informed him, yes, his name is Gaspar Vladi, I made him my bishop, he also happens to be a vampire, or a child born from a vampire and a human. Wait, vampire? You mean those guys that suck blood and can't go out in daylight? Naruto asked, he still wasn't totally familiar with even common information. Yes, although that isn't the best summary, Ria's replied before clarifying, luckily, Gaspar is a daywalker, so he can go outside during the day, even if the sun weakens him more than most devils. So how did you recruit him? I thought the underworld was the home of devils, not vampires. Naruto questioned while scratching his head. I didn't recruit him in the underworld, I did it in Hungary, the second day there my Otu-sama's bishop, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, had to do something in Hungary, I decided to accompany him, just to see more of the human world, Riaz explained, Naruto nodded in understanding, Riaz had come to the human world due to a genuine interest in it. Even if she seemed unusually focused on Japan for some reason, it was natural she'd take an opportunity to see a new place, Ria's continued calmly, I took an opportunity to walk around when Heinrich did his business, I ended up sensing some sort of unrest in the forest outside of town, I was curious enough to check it out. Ria stopped here with a frown and crossed her arms, this had the unintentional side effect of pushing her breasts up, making them more prominent, Naruto cold and help his eyes from automatically lowering, he quickly looked back up, a slight blush lighting up his cheeks, in his defense, Ria's had recently gone through a growth spurt, while she grew about an inch. The main difference was in the chest area, she had easily gained a whole cup size, and Naruto doubted her growth spurt was done, it didn't help that Ria's had already been above average in that department when they had met. It was even worse with Akeno, she was shorter than Ria's, but seemed to be growing even more there, already she was a bit larger than Ria's. As a hormonal male, there was no way Naruto could completely control himself. It wasn't a time to think such thoughts though, Ria's was clearly unhappy as she continued, I was too late for the battle, but I did find Gaspar's body, he had run away from home, and vampire hunters had found him, by the time I arrived, Gaspar was dead and the hunters were gone, I decided to reincarnate him, his cost was very high though. I either had to use six pawn pieces or my mutation bishop piece, I decided on the bishop piece. That really sucks, being hunted just because of who you are, Naruto muttered thoughtfully, turning to Ria's with a smile, he declared happily, but at least you were there, Ria's chan you revived him, even at the cost of your mutation piece, not that it expect anything different. Ria's blushed slightly at the praise and quickly protested, I didn't do it entirely out of selfless reasons, Naruto-kun, a vampire is a powerful being if trained properly, the cost to reincarnate him also showed that he was powerful or had a sacred gear, I gained a powerful servant out of it. Yeah, but I know you would have reincarnated him anyway, Naruto claimed confidently. Really? You're sure of that, Ria's asked with a raised eyebrow. Yep, Naruto said instantly, nodding his head thoughtfully, he explained, I don't claim to understand a whole lot of stuff, but I've been around you every day for nine months, Ria's chan I know you. Ria's was surprised by his words, and cold and find fault with his words, Akeno lived in a shrine, Yudo lived in a mansion the Gremory clan owned, which Ria's had decided would house any male peerage members that didn't have a place to live, Kaneko lived in an apartment, only Naruto and Ria's lived in the old school building, while they each had their own rooms. That did mean they spent a good deal of time around each other, they were obviously going to become familiar with each other. He was right as well, Ria's had been planning to reincarnate Gaspar even before she learned he likely had a sacred gear, she simply hadn't been able to imagine leaving him to die there, her mutation bishop piece had been her only option, she had other plans for the majority of her pawns. Not sure how to tell him that, she looked ahead as she warned him, I should warn you though, Gaspar hasn't had the best life, vampires value bloodline even more than devils, being a vampire, Gaspar wasn't treated well even by his family, he also lacks control of his sacred gear, which only encourage people to ostracize him, unfortunately. My mutation bishop piece seems to have only empowered his sacred gear, his control has worsened. What is his sacred gear anyways? It's called the Forbidden Baylor View, it allows him to stop the time of everything in his line of sight, Ria's answered calmly. 
Naruto froze up at that, slowly turning his head to look at Ria's, he commented in disbelief, stop time. Sacred Gears can even give bullshit powers like that. Yes, Sacred Gears can even do stuff like that, Ria stated with a chuckle, her eyes hardened though as she clarified, it isn't as omnipotent as it sounds though, Gasper can only stop time in his line of sight, there are actually quite a few ways to work around it, once you understand the mechanics, not to mention he still can't control it, right now he just freezes everything he sees, randomly. It is actually a huge issue, a power like that activating randomly it can go so wrong, imagine Gasper accidentally freezing us in the middle of a battle, or his power activating in town or school, his power makes whoever he is looking at completely vulnerable, my Ani Sama is particularly worried about it. Biting her lips in worry, she finally sighed before telling Naruto, either way, Gasper's life wasn't easy, he has a general fear of people, he can't handle meeting people, the entire break was centered on just getting him comfortable around my peerage, we were only partly successful, so try to be gentle on him, Naruto-kun. Don't worry, Ria's chan will become fast friends, I just know it, Naruto claimed confidently, despite lacking any evidence to back it up. Something Ria's realized, she looked at Naruto cautiously, Naruto was nice, but he was kind of boisterous, he was a very big character, Naruto's overall pushiness might just scare Gasper, she was hoping Naruto's enthusiasm might help the timid Gasper, but she wasn't expecting much. Finally reaching the club room where the others had gathered, Ria's walked in, she frowned after scanning the room, where's Gasper? The reactions of those present varied, Yudo chuckled awkwardly, Kaneko didn't react, Akeno smiled as she admitted uneasily, Gasper Kun ran when we told him we were going to introduce him to someone. He ran. Naruto asked in disbelief, feeling his face, he asked in befuddlement, am I that scary looking? More stupid looking than scary looking, Kaneko said bluntly. Not at all, I actually get the desire to bully you when looking at you, Akeno pitched in. Yudo just raised his hand and made a wishy-washy gesture. That's enough, Naruto-kun, Gasper didn't even see you, so your looks aren't the problem, Ria's quickly said, raising a palm to her forehead, she muttered, I knew Gasper was bad, but running at the thought of meeting someone. Don't worry, Ria's chan, he'll find him in no time, Naruto declared as he moved towards the window, it was his preferred method of leaving the room for some reason. Ria's hesitated slightly at letting Naruto meet Gasper without a present, but eventually decided to let him, Naruto was a good guy, he won't do anything to harm Gasper. Giving him a nod of approval, Naruto eagerly jumped out the window, Ria's then moved to her desk with a sigh, she really was worried about Gasper, her brother hadn't been gentle when he explained what might happen to Gasper. Speak of the devil, and he doth appear. The magic circle on the floor lit up, Ria's watched in alarm as her brother appeared with Grafia at his side, the look on his face was telling, instead of smiling like he usually was, he was completely serious. Ani sama, Ria's whispered in worry. Naruto jumped through the trees at a steady pace, his head swiveling side to side to try and see his quarry, tree hopping was one of the skills that just came naturally to Naruto, it was useful as it allowed him a whole new avenue of movement in forests, compared to being confined to the ground. Naruto had created a dozen shadow clones after leaving the old school building, they had then scattered to search for the missing Gasper, Naruto wasn't one to sit on the sidelines though, and had joined in the search. The forest on the campus wasn't small, but it wasn't that large either, especially to 13 different Naruto jumping through the trees, within 5 minutes the search was over, funnily enough, it was the real Naruto that found their target. Stopping on a branch, Naruto looked down at the figure he had found, it was a small male, considering it was break, it was definitely Naruto's target, grinning happily, Naruto jumped down while calling out, found you. As soon as Naruto touched down, the kid turned around, as soon as he caught sight of Naruto, he let out a high-pitched scream more suited to a female, Naruto also felt a weird feeling wash over him, blinking in surprise, he was even more shocked to see the kid had disappeared, that was obviously the forbidden Baylor view at work, but it was still a shock to experience it himself. The sound of rapid footsteps allowed Naruto to pinpoint his target, Gasper could only stop time within his line of sight, that meant he could never get further than seeing distance before Naruto regained his ability to move, Naruto quickly turned his head to see the back of the damn pyre as he ran away. Frowning, Naruto quickly dashed towards his fleeing target, it was easy to catch up to him, Naruto caught the kid's wrist, to force him to come to a halt, Naruto opened his mouth to say something as the kid squeaked in fear, but he didn't even get his first word out, before the kid turned to face him, next thing Naruto knew he was grasping at empty air. Naruto's eye twitched in irritation, okay, he was able to see how that could be annoying now, talk about rude. Turning towards the once again fleeing individual, Naruto resumed the chase with a determined glint in his eyes, if the kid wanted to make this a chase, Naruto would play. 
Naruto actually decided to play the patient game, Gaspar wasn't particularly fast, it was just that his sacred gear made it damn near impossible to trap him, it was possible, Naruto could just put his hands over Gaspar's eyes or grab him from behind in a way that Gaspar won't be able to see him, Naruto decided to forego such an approach though, the kid was clearly scared. No need to exacerbate that fear, Naruto instead decided to turn it into a stamina match, using his superior speed, Naruto would move in front of Gaspar, Gaspar would then squeak, freeze Naruto, and run in the opposite direction, rinse and repeat. A few dozen repetitions later Naruto was looking at Gaspar, who was on his knees gasping, no wonder the vampire hunters had caught him, Gaspar's stamina wasn't exactly the greatest, with a few people, it would actually be rather simple to just run him down till he collapsed of exhaustion. Sighing, Naruto plopped down on the ground in front of Gaspar, he then asked in an amused voice, are you done? I can do this all day, if you are wondering. Gaspar tried to crawl away, but was clearly too exhausted, finally he just lowered his head as he cried out pitifully, im suuri, just go why I. Naruto just sighed and leaned forward, grabbing Gaspar's wrist, he then pulled him closer as he grunted out in annoyance, come on, you should be closer when talking to someone. Nuo. Gaspar cried out in his high-pitched voice, interestingly, his sacred gear hadn't activated, he just cried out, wwy. I don't want to talk to people. I said I was Suori. Okay, firstly, stop screaming, Naruto ordered, swatting the back of Gaspar's head in annoyance, he was sitting just opposite Gaspar, he didn't want to have his hearing blown. Gaspar held the back of his head in shock, looking at Naruto with wide teary eyes, this allowed Naruto to get his first good lack at Gaspar, he had been able to look at him during the chase, but hadn't been able to get a real good look, his opinion Gaspar was really girly looking, Naruto understood that young boys lack many masculine traits, but this was more than that. Gaspar didn't just lack masculine traits, he had feminine ones, he wasn't androgynous looking, but truly feminine looking. Gaspar's platinum blonde hair was styled into a short bob cut, although a more severe cut than Kaneko's, his eyes were a very unique pinkish red color, his ears were pointed, and Naruto could see the tips of his canine teeth poking out from under his lip, he had a small build, similar to Kaneko, except for being noticeably taller, not that such a feat was difficult since Kaneko was so short. He was dressed in some basic clothing, brown pants and a white shirt. Okay, now we can actually talk, Naruto said, pleased by Gaspar's silence, looking at Gaspar, Naruto declared honestly, I don't even get what you are apologizing about, you didn't do anything to me. BB but I used my sacred gear on you, Gaspar stuttered out. Did you do something to me when I stopped? Naruto immediately asked, feeling his face, he asked in a panic, I don't have writing on my face or something. Let me guess, you drew a dick on my cheek or something. And no. Gaspar immediately exclaimed, blushing at the thought. Shrugging, Naruto did a quick pat down of his body, he then announced in an uncaring voice, well I don't seem to have any stab wounds, and I don't seem to be missing anything, it doesn't seem like you did anything to me while I was frozen. Oh of course I didn't, Gaspar immediately claimed, looking bewildered by the very notion. Then what does it matter? Naruto asked with a shrug, if it wasn't for the whole disappearing act, then I wouldn't have even noticed that you stopped me, if you didn't do anything to me, why should I care? Gaspar looked surprised by Naruto's words, he finally whispered in confusion, you aren't angry. No dick on my face then I'm not angry, Naruto answered truthfully. DT then why were you chasing me? Gaspar asked pitifully. Well I wanted to talk to you, of course, Naruto replied like it was obvious, holding out his hand, he explained, Ria's chan was telling me about you, we were supposed to meet in the club room, my name is Uzumaki Naruto, Gaspar, nice to meet you. Gaspar just stared at Naruto, he eventually lowered his head his head and looked away. Naruto groaned before asking, am I really that scary looking? Heh. Huh? Gaspar gasped in shock, looking at Naruto in confusion. Well you are clearly terrified, I heard from Ria's chan that you were afraid of other people, but this is clearly something more, Naruto explained in dismay. Gaspar looked down before admitting, I am not afraid of you, Yuzumaki-san, but you told me a lot about you I'm afraid of myself, my power. You are afraid of your own power? Naruto asked, not getting it. Yes, I, I hate my power, I hate this sacred gear, I don't need this power, I, I don't want to stop people, I don't want to see their frozen faces, Gaspar cried out, tears running down his face, he sobbed as he continued, I scare people because I stop them, they dislike me, everyone leaves me, I don't want that. Naruto wasn't really sure how to react, he hadn't ever dealt with a crying person before, or at least he can't remember helping a crying person before, obviously he should comfort him, but how? Why not just learn to control it? 
Naruto finally suggested. Gaspar just stared at him, seemingly unsure of how to react. Naruto scratched his head as he clarified. That seems to be the obvious illusion, at least to me, the real issue is your lack of control. It might be scary for some that you could stop them like that, but you really don't seem like the kind of guy who would abuse that power. So everything should be good if you learn to control it, right? Gaspar quickly shook his head as he claimed, and then knew. No, 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 I can't do that. Why not? Naruto immediately asked. The Kous. Gaspar exclaimed before continuing in a voice so quick Naruto could barely understand it, I'm not good enough, I can't do something like that, I'm a coward, and I'm weak, I don't have the strength or courage to do something like Master Forbidden Baylor View. Then why not take some of mine? Naruto asked suddenly, at least concerning strength, courage is something everyone has, everyone just has to find their own, but it is a different story if you are talking about strength, I like to think I'm strong, and I love training. Yeah, that totally works, Naruto declared confidently, standing up, Gaspar jumped slightly, still stunned by his previous words, grinning widely, Naruto looked down at Gaspar, he then extended a hand as he proclaimed, if you don't have the strength, I'll lend you mine, if you are scared, I'll walk the path in front of you, if you are too tired, I'll carry you, that's my promise to you, Gaspar Vladi. All you have to do is find the courage to grab my hand. Gaspar gaped, caught completely off guard, Naruto just waited patiently. Asper finally managed to stutter out, WW why would you help me like that? Well, I'd like to think we're comrades, Naruto stated after a moment of thought. Comrades? Gaspar asked in surprise. Yeah, after all, we both owe Ria's chan she saved your life, and Shed put up with me for nine months to help me learn everything really, I'd like to think that similar motivations is enough to make us comrades, and for some reason I have a strong faith in the bonds between comrades, Naruto explained awkwardly, not really knowing how to phrase it, looking back at Gaspar. Naruto asked with his hand still extended, well, Gaspar. I've always remembered a phrase from my past, even if I don't know the circumstances behind it, when a person has something precious that they want to protect that's when they become truly strong, so do you have something precious you want to protect, Gaspar? Enough to grab my hand and walk the path to Master Forbidden Baylor View. Gaspar could only think to himself, that day, ten days ago, he had thought it was all over when those vampire hunters drove that stake through his heart, had accepted death, embraced the opportunity to leave this cruel world behind. Yet he woke up to find Rias crouching over him, she had revived him, given him a new life, taken him into her home and peerage, she ran to catch him when he ran away, he introduced him to people, she treated him kindly, comforted him. I don't want to be useless to but you, Gaspar finally declared softly, lifting his hand slowly, he placed it in Naruto's. That's the spirit, Naruto commented as he effortlessly pulled Gaspar to his feet, he then continued, we should get back to Ria's chan well tell her the good news then, well start training as soon as we can. Okay. As the two started walking, Naruto eventually started grinning, a brief chuckle came out of his mouth, but it gradually grew till it turned into a full on evil villain cackle, he then declared, I can already imagine the pranks we could together, Gaspar. You really did that, Naruto-san. Naruto nodded eagerly at Gaspar's question and replied, yep, boy, was a kenomad, you give a girl a few laxatives, and she goes all crazy on you. Naruto had quickly started telling Gaspar about pranks, Naruto wasn't able to prank as much as he wanted to since he was rather isolated, but he still found it fun, with Gaspar's ability they could do everything and more, Gaspar seemed surprisingly enthusiastic, maybe it was just admiration for Naruto, but he seemed honestly interested. As the two walked into the clearing around the old school building they came to a halt, it was hard not to, Ria's and her peerage was outside, but there were two additions, the atmosphere was so tense it could be cut, Gaspar immediately hid behind Naruto anxiously. Naruto tensed as his eyes raked over the two visitors, one was a red-haired man in a suit, his eyes were a similar color to Ria's, although he was quite a bit taller than her, maybe six feet tall, Naruto figured this was Ria's brother that she occasionally talked about, the resemblance was clear, even if the guy had a shade darker hair, the other was a woman wearing a maid outfit. Her hair was a silver gray color with multiple braids, and her eyes were a similar color to her hair, she was quite beautiful, Naruto noted absently. I see you finally returned with Gaspar, Naruto-kun, Ria's remarked seriously, looking displeased about something. WW what is going on, be but you. W why is Lucifer Sama H here, Gaspar questioned anxiously. Ria's didn't answer, instead biting her lip angrily, Serzich's instead stepped forward and announced, I'm sorry, Gaspar-kun, but myself and the other Mayu have come to a decision your sacred gear is too dangerous in its current state, we have judged Ria's too inexperienced to properly manage it. We feel we have little option but to seal you within Ria's base until such a time Ria's has gained the experience and skill necessary to handle your power. Asper recoiled as if struck, with tears immediately gathering in his eyes. Like hell. Obviously Gasper wasn't the one to speak. 
Everyone looked at Naruto in surprise at the outburst. Naruto was gritting his teeth angrily as he marched up to Surzich's. He came to a stop just in front of the Mayu, showing no fear whatsoever. You can't do that to Gasper, Naruto immediately declared. Surzich's seemed to recover the quickest out of everyone present. He just raised an eyebrow before he said, Yuzumaki Naruto, Riaz has told me much about you, I am. Surzich's Lucifer, the current leader of the Four Great Satans, and Ria's older brother, Naruto finished for him, he then grunted out, Ria's did tell me about you. Surzich's ignored the rudeness in favor of informing Naruto seriously, then she must have told your current actions would mean for you, Otusama and Akasama have decided to turn a blind eye to Ria's sponsorship of you, however, you are not part of Ria's peerage, this is none of your business, and you have no reason to be interjecting in this conversation. Especially in questioning the will of the Four Great Satans. It is my business, Gasper is my comrade, Naruto proclaimed immediately. On what basis do you claim such a thing? Surzichas asked skeptically. Here Naruto finally hesitated, stuttering slightly, he scratched the back of his head awkwardly, finally his eyes went to Ria's, and he informed her sheepishly, I was going to tell you when we had a moment alone, Ria's chan I was going to see if the option to join your peerage was still open. Ria's blinked in question before asking in surprise, what? Naruto rubbed his head as he explained with a slight bit of embarrassment, well, you have been taking care of me, I really owe you everything, plus, I hang out with you guys all the time, it honestly feels like I'm part of the group, being left behind because I wasn't part of your peerage well, let's just say I didn't like the feeling, the time alone also gave me plenty of time to think. You guys are really all I know, I don't think I have any family, and you guys are my only friends, there really isn't anything preventing me from becoming a devil, and I can pay you back for all you've done for me, if I join your peerage, Ria's chan if the offer is still open that is. Oh of course the option is still open, Ria's claimed quickly, trying to hide just how happy that news made her. Great, that's a load off my mind, Naruto said with a relieved smile, he quickly turned back to a bemused Surzich's and exclaimed, well, now that I'm going to be joining Ria's chan's peerage, Gasper is my comrade, which makes all this business about sealing him up my business. While that may be true as a future peerage member, it still doesn't give you the authority to defy the will of the four great satans, Surzich's announced seriously before elaborating, we do not wish to do this, but we need to contain the situation, Ria's is an inexperienced king, and Gaspar Kun's forbidden Baylor view is a very dangerous sacred gear, doubly so since he can't control it. We can't let Gaspar roam free with such a situation. Then that won't be a problem, I already made a promise with Gaspar to help him master his sacred gear, Naruto declared. His words caused Ria's peerage to react in shock, Naruto and Gasper had only been in that forest for an hour, tops, for Naruto to earn Gasper's trust to such a degree in that time was nothing short of miraculous, it took days and days of effort on their part just to get Gasper slightly comfortable around them. Ria smiled at the news though, she hadn't been sure if Naruto could do it, but Naruto had blown her expectations out of the water with this. Surzich's wasn't nearly so moved, he instead demanded bluntly, and what expertise do you have that would allow you to train Gasper Kun? You do not have forbidden Baylor view, you don't have a sacred gear entirely, you rent even a vampire or devil, you may be a unique human, but that cannot cover everything. Naruto growled lightly at that, but cold retort, he had a point, there was no particular reason that Naruto would be able to train Gasper, Naruto naturally had ideas, but it might turn out Gasper needed some sort of specialized training, Naruto really could lack the expertise needed for the job. Fight me. Naruto's sudden request made everything stand still for a moment, no one, not even Surzich's, wasn't surprised by the sudden wish of the blonde, fighting a Mayu, the strongest Mayu, the person acknowledged as the strongest devil in existence, for a 14-year-old human boy to request such a thing was beyond crazy, it was tantamount to suicide. Ria's was the first to react by exclaiming in shock, you can't be serious, Naruto-kun. You have no right to request such a thing of Surzich's sama Grafia quickly pitched in, a frown on her face. Surzich's himself just stared at Naruto, open curiosity in his eyes, he finally asked, and why would you want to fight me? Naruto looked into Surzich's eyes intently as he replied passionately, you are right, I have no particular expertise that would allow me to train Gasper, all I have is an honest desire to help him, you don't know me though, so words will mean little to you, so I'll have to make do with actions. Surzich's sama you need not do such a thing, I myself shall fight him if you desire to see. Raphia was cut off by Surzich's raising a hand, he then smiled and said, I'll do it. Sirs. Enough, Grafia, if the boy is determined to prove himself, I'll give him the opportunity, it isn't as if he'll be in danger, Surzich's claimed, sending Grafia a look that made it clear the discussion was closed, she submissively bowed her head, he then looked back at Naruto as he said, let's just move a little bit away from the building first. Of course, Naruto said, turning and walking a bit away. 
His arm was quickly grabbed by Ria's though, who whispered to him urgently, I won't try to convince you to stop this, Naruto-kun, but be careful, Ani-sama is powerful, don't expect to land even a single shot. It'll do whatever it takes to change his mind, Naruto grunted out. Ria's just shook her head with a small smile, patting his cheek affectionately, she told him fondly, well I'm rooting for you. Nodding happily at the show of support, Naruto looked around for Gaspar, he was confused to see Gaspar was absent, where's Gaspar? Sighing, Ria's pointed at an innocuous box by Kaneko's feet, she then said, Hess in there. The box wiggled slightly before Gaspar's muffled voice came from it, TT thank you very much, Naruto-san, fighting Amayu on my behalf, why why you are much braver than I am, I don't like violence though, so it'll be in here. Naruto just stared for several seconds, he then turned to Ria's and asked, do I want to ask? Ria's just sighed again before explaining, he kept asking for a coffin, eventually Kaneko gave him a box, unexpectedly, he took a liking to it, says he feels comfortable in there, made a bit of sense, coffins and boxes were both cramped and dark. Naruto just decided to not comment on it though, he instead looked at Serzich's, who was waiting calmly, the Mayu clearly wasn't worried in the least, Naruto quickly moved opposite him. You can attack any time you wish, Serzich's claimed with a small smile. Naruto decided to do just that and started the match by dashing at the Mayu, moving as fast as possible, Naruto decided to start with a direct powerful kick, Serzich's just raised an arm to block, the kick failed to budge the Mayu a single inch, and a quick extension of his arm sent Naruto flying across the clearing. Naruto had to flip through the air so that he hit a tree feet first instead of back first. Sticking to the tree with another of his skills, Naruto stared at the Mayu seriously, that was honestly what Naruto expected, the Mayu was far superior to Naruto physically, saying Naruto was a toddler banging on the legs of an adult was probably an understatement, there was that large a difference between Naruto and the Mayu. Numbers it was then, crossing his fingers, Naruto gathered as much chakra he could, the concentration of energy actually caused Naruto's body to be covered in a hazy blue cloak, Naruto then called out, Teju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. A massive cloud of smoke covered the entire area, it slowly cleared to reveal a sea of Naruto's, shadow clones were everywhere, the ground and trees were covered in the copies of the blonde, there had to be a hundred. Interesting, straightforward and wasteful, but indicates massive reserves of energy, Serzich's commented as he looked around, he didn't sound the least bit worried, he then smiled as he announced, I guess he'll at least use a technique to handle this, just as an example for you to learn from Ruin the Extinct. Serzich's raised a single hand, a block of demonic power formed above his palm, without any gesture, that block of demonic power started breaking apart to form a multitude of small balls the size of marbles, the demonic power of the balls started giving off an irregular aura, quickly changing to a crimson color, power of destruction. Charge, Naruto yelled out. The clones moved forward as a large wave, Serzich's just smiled, not moving from his position, only the balls of his power of destruction moved, and boy did they move, they moved so fast it was difficult to see them, they even left after images behind, they dived right into the wave of clones. It was an amazing technique, the pure lethality of the power of destruction made them impossible to block, the maneuverability and speed the small balls afforded made them difficult to track and near impossible to dodge, Serzich's control of them was astonishing as well, he didn't need to move at all, just mentally controlling them, it worked both as an offense and defense. Not a single clone had gotten within 10 steps of Serzich's. Naruto was only surviving due to the number of clones, and that number was rapidly falling, Serzich's technique was destroying clones by the dozens, so it was inevitable that eventually the real Naruto was hit himself, a grunt rang through the air, and the clones all dispersed, the original Naruto was left alone, kneeling on the ground while cradling a hole in his side. It was lucky nothing vital was hit, actually, it had nothing to do with luck, not a single clone had received fatal injuries, even manipulating a multitude of those balls, Serzich's had been able to do so with enough awareness and precision for every wound he dealt to be a minor injury. All the while, Serzich's had yet to move an inch from his starting position. Naruto grasped at his side, growling at the pain, looking at Serzich's, Naruto jumped backwards, he then hid behind a tree. Is this all you got, Naruto-kun? Serzich's asked calmly. Not even close, Naruto called out, despite it being a complete bluff, Naruto hadn't been able to position any clones close enough to Serzich's to try and use his physical transformations to ambush him, wait actually, there was something Naruto could do. Straightening, Naruto walked around the tree to look at Serzich's, approaching slowly, he came to a stop about 10 steps away, Serzich's just smiled at him, those small balls hovering around him, no doubt ready to intercept any sort of attack. Naruto paused briefly, looking at the balls, for some reason, the sight of them was niggling at something in his brain okay, maybe he had two trump cards. 
Looking at Serzich's seriously, Naruto made five clones, four of those clones moved forward toward Serzich's, pausing, they all made a hand seal, the ball surrounding Serzich's seemed to freeze in preparation for whatever attack Naruto had planned. Param no Jutsu. The clones called out as one, they then all transformed into beautiful women, busty, naked, women. Why did I know Naruto-kun was going to do that? Rias groaned out as she buried her face in her palms, her peerage were all chuckling awkwardly, and Grafia was blinking owlishly at the technique. It actually had the desired outcome concerning Serzich's though, his jaw dropped, and he was clearly lost for words, the balls around him seemed to drop slightly from his lack of concentration, he even blushed slightly. Which Naruto used, his clones dispersed to show the original charging at Serzich's, one of his hands held behind him, the remaining clone was striking the air above his palm, forming some sort of swirling sphere, the original then tried to shove it into Serzich's stomach, while shouting, Rasengan. It never reached, Naruto's distraction had worked, Naruto only got within 5 feet of Serzich's for that reason, hitting Serzich's was an entirely different story though, his balls reacted in time to stop the attack 2 feet from his stomach, the attacks briefly grinding against each other. The rapidly rotating nature of Naruto's attack seemingly allowed it to resist the all-consuming nature of Serzich's power of destruction. Naruto's attack was the first to fail, it destabilized, exploding, Naruto was thrown back, while well, Serzich's managed to weather through the explosion without moving, Naruto groaned when he finally stopped rolling, slowly working his way to his feet. I must admit that distraction technique is wonderfully creative, it almost worked, Serzich's exclaimed with a chuckle, he then grew serious as he added, that Rasengan just proved my point though, your own powers are unstable, in flux, you are in no position to guide someone else, when you don't even have your own abilities down, that attack failed due to a flaw in your execution of it. You lack the control to use it properly, work on perfecting your own techniques before you try teaching this bar is done, Serzich's turned and started to move away from Naruto. No, I refuse to accept that, Naruto shouted, before he could move toward Serzich's back though, one of the balls went right though Naruto's right thigh before then going through his left thigh, he collapsed onto his stomach, his run cut short. Serzich's peeked over his shoulder as he said, you don't have a choice, he then continued walking. Naruto growled angrily, his hands curling into fists, he cold let them lock Gasper away, but how could he possibly stop it? The Mayu was so above Naruto's league it wasn't even funny, Naruto could barely stand with the new holes in his legs, he was completely helpless to stop Serzich's. Helplessness often leads to anger, and this was indeed the case with Naruto, growing angry at his own weakness, Naruto felt a long missing energy flow through his body, with it empowering him, Naruto forced himself to his feet. No, I told you, I refuse to accept that, Naruto growled out as he struggled to stay on his feet. Still standing, I'm impressed, humans are not typically so resilient, Serzich's commented, looking surprised by Naruto's continued resistance, why do you struggle so much? The ceiling will not be painful, he'll simply be locked in a room during the day, it'll even allow him to leave during the night, I would not be opposed if you trained him during that time. That's not the point, Naruto yelled, his eyes turned red, and his pupil changed into a slit, his rising anger even caused the red energy to form a cloak around him, the first tail formed behind him as he continued, by locking him up by, saying he is too dangerous to wander around you, are implying that there is something wrong with him, when instead you need to make it clear that he just needs help. If you seal Gasper up, his confidence might never recover. As he was speaking, the cloak was expanding, it started at one tail, it then increased to two, then three. Finished speaking and with three tails manifested, Naruto shot forward, he was moving far faster than he had been previously, even so, Serzich's mentally commanded his balls to intercept Naruto, this time Naruto tried to slip through the barrage, he was only partly successful, but the cloak luckily managed to deflect the balls that would have skimmed him. Serzich's was shocked by the sight of his power of destruction being deflected by the cloak, even if he hadn't really concentrated his power of destruction, deflecting them was still a feat few could manage, the shock combined with Naruto's increased speed meant that Serzich's failed to block the overhand right Naruto unloaded. Bang. The watchers all stared in shock, their disbelief was clear, and it was for a good reason, the strongest devil in existence was just decked by a 14-year-old human, it was ridiculous, but it had just happened. Naruto himself was breathing deeply, having put damn near everything he had into that punch, the cloak of energy was still covering him, but Naruto was still beat, at least he got the guy once. Well, that was a surprise, Serzich's commented softly, moving his head to look at Naruto, despite just taking Naruto's punch, there wasn't even a mark to show for it, he actually smiled at Naruto as he continued, that energy of yours is quite powerful, if you were older and knew how to use it, you might be capable of making me work for the victory, for now though. The shock Naruto just experienced pain after that, looking down, he found Serzich's fist buried in his stomach, Naruto felt like puking up everything in his stomach, but the pain overcame that, he only drooped forward as the blackness claimed him. 
Serzichas caught the unconscious Naruto on his arm, he looked at the kid analytically for a few seconds, focusing on the rapidly retreating orange energy, that definitely wasn't the power of a human, had read the report Ria's wrote about the incident where she met Naruto, but seeing it was an entirely different story, the strength boost Naruto had gained definitely wasn't natural. It hadn't felt like a sacred gear either, if it wasn't a sacred gear though, then how did Naruto, who was human, have a power that was distinctly inhuman? Naruto-kun, a number of different voices called out. Serzichas looked over to see Ria's and her peerage approaching, clearly worried about the unconscious human he was holding, he gave them a smile and informed them calmly, do not worry, he is just unconscious. Thank goodness, we weren't sure how you might react to that cloak of his, Ria's explained as she gently took Naruto from Serzichas. Serzichas quickly asked, has that happened since you first met him, Ria's? Ria shook her head as she answered, no, nothing, we've even tried to have him bring it out a number of times, but it never worked. I actually have an idea on that, Akeno quickly pitched in, reluctantly ceasing her efforts to check on Naruto, she then elaborated, remember, but you, Naruto was hit by a semi before we first met him, and the injuries were gone by the time we fought him, Serzichas Sama injured Naruto's side and legs, but they are now healed, it seems to me that Naruto draws upon that energy when injured. And it then heals him. A method of preservation, Ria's muttered, cupping her chin in thought. A reasonable proposal, but not enough, I want to understand this phenomena, preferably before you turn him into a peerage member, Ria's ill take him to the underworld to be examined. Ria's panicked at her brother's claim, and quickly protested, Ani-sama, that really isn't. Do not worry, Ria's, Serzichas interrupted, giving her a soft smile, he told her reassuringly, it is nothing bad, I simply want an explanation of this unknown. Ria still didn't look thrilled, but reluctantly acceded. So how long do I have to stay here? Naruto asked, a pout on his face and his arms crossed. He was in the hospital, something he didn't like in the least, he had actually already tried to escape once, but that idea was scrapped when he saw the purple sky, he was in the underworld, considering he had no way of returning to Kuo by himself, he was sort of trapped, Ria's and Akeno were in the room with him, the other members of Ria's peerage were left behind. Ria's and Akeno had already missed the first day of school, but Ria's apparently felt Naruto was more important than a day or two of school. Ara Ara, are you uncomfortable being in a hospital? Akeno asked in amusement, licking her lips sensually, she said in a breathy voice, please, don't hesitate to tell me all about how uncomfortable you are, it'll gladly listen to your discomfort. Naruto just stared in a deadpan at Ria's queen, whose S-switch had clearly been flipped, she just loved it when Naruto was uncomfortable, at least he was getting used to it. Enough of that, Akeno, Ria's ordered in sternly. Oh, you are no fun, but you, Akeno announced with a groan. Ignoring her queen's disappointment, Ria's looked at Naruto as she explained, it shouldn't be long, Ani-sama actually managed to bring in Beelzebub-sama to examine you, it was all done before you woke up, Ani-sama is talking to Beelzebub-sama now, it all depends on what they found, but I'm hoping it will be over soon, I really want to formally reincarnate you as soon as possible. But Ani-sama requested I wait till they finish discussing everything. Okay, but I really wish they would hurry it up, sitting here waiting to hear what's wrong with me isn't exactly the most enjoyable activity, Naruto grumbled out. Then it's a good thing it is over, Serzichas declared as he let himself in. He wasn't alone, behind him was another man, he was handsome, with fine clothing, his palpable aura was clearly powerful, and seemed rather devilish, the man looked rather bored, and slightly annoyed. Which only increased after Serzichas threw his arm around his shoulders and announced, This is my friend, Ajuka, I called him here to examine you, Naruto-kun. Riaz and Akeno both quickly stood and hastily bowed at the man, while saying, Beelzebub-sama. The Mayu just sighed before admitting bluntly, No need for anything formal, I just want to get this over with, this annoying guy practically dragged me here, and while this was a very interesting case, it isn't quite within my preferred field of work, so it'll just explain what I learned. What about Gaspar? Naruto quickly broke in. The two mass blinked in shock at the outburst, Serzichas finally asked, you want to know about that first? Yeah, Naruto answered simply. All right, Serzichas replied, looking at Naruto seriously, he explained, your powers are unstable, and you yourself are inexperienced, you are not a good candidate to train Gaspar, Naruto-kun however, you clearly feel strongly about this, those feelings allowed you to draw upon a new well of power, considering this, I am willing to give you a chance. Maybe you two can achieve new heights by working together. You mean Gaspar won't be sealed? Naruto asked excitedly. Yes, Gaspar won't be sealed, Serzichas stated, much to the happiness of the three in front of him, he quickly interrupted though by informing them gravely, it won't be easy for you all though, he'll be expecting weekly reports from Ria's, he'll need to know what methods are being used to train Gaspar, the frequency of your training sessions, and any results, if I find you all lacking. I shall rescind this decision, understood. Of course, Ria's replied respectfully. 
Don't worry, I'm sure Gaspar will improve, Naruto said much less respectfully. As long as you all understand the situation, there must be improvement or there will be consequences, Serzich has told them. Alright, now that you are done with that, can I explain the situation to you all now? Ajuka asked, not looking too pleased that he was still here, Naruto scratched his head sheepishly, and Riaz gave a nod at him to continue, looking at Naruto, he announced bluntly, put simply, you have a monster sealed inside of you. Naruto just blinked owlishly at the Mayu, he then cleaned his ear out with his finger before asking, I'm sorry, did you say a monster? The creator of the evil P system just sighed, he then moved closer and pulled up Naruto's shirt, despite Naruto's struggles, placing a finger on Naruto's stomach, he pulsed some energy, just like that, a weird-looking spiral pattern formed on Naruto's stomach. This seal holds the monster, Ajuka explained, I found it on my preliminary examination, I wasn't quite sure what it was, it resembles several different styles of runes and seals, but it has some critical differences, the closest similar style I could find was the sealing method the biblical god used in his heaven system, they are remarkably similar, examining it. I managed to gain access to a mental representation of the seal it was a sower I sensed an immense power deeper in, and after a bit of walking I found the source, it appeared to be a massive Kyubi no Kitsune. The Kaiubi. Akeno repeated in confusion, she quickly pointed out, but the energy we detected wasn't that of a yaokai, somewhat close, but still not a yaokai. I said it appeared to be a Kaiubi no Kitsune, not that it was a Kaiubi no Kitsune, Ajuka countered calmly, after crossing his arms he elaborated, well the beast was far from forthcoming with knowledge about its being, I am luckily skilled in examining unusual phenomena, my examination showed that it was a beast of pure energy, it has no true corporeal body. Based on the nature of the energy it is composed of, I believe this monster was created from the energy of a god, it was obviously only a piece of the whole as well, I believe there must be a number of other similar beings, so a piece of a god. A piece of a god. Rias repeated in shock, unsure how to take in this knowledge. Yes, a powerful fragment of an extremely powerful god, that is my current belief, Ajuka confirmed with a nod. I don't really get it, Naruto admitted while scratching his head, a piece of a god was inside of him, that was a rather difficult thing to understand, shrugging, he asked, he'll think about it later, did you find out anything else? Yes, I did actually, Ajuka said before continuing, the Kaiubi just yelled vitriol at me when I tried to talk to it, but a strike of luck appeared, two spirits appeared. Two spirits. You mean I also have two people inside of me? Naruto demanded in disbelief, first a giant Kaiubi god thing, and now two spirits. What's next? A previous incarnation. Yes, you do, now please don't interrupt, Ajuka said, clearly not pleased with all the interruptions, taking a breath, he continued, these two spirits seem to have been sealed alongside the Kaiubi, a failsafe to the seal, luckily, they were far more amenable than the Kaiubi, they even managed to pass knowledge of the sealing style used on the creature to me, I learned much. The immediately important things were that the Kaiubi was sealed inside of you as a baby, you can draw upon its power either when injured or when experiencing powerful emotions, negative emotions like anger and hatred are particularly effective, however, the seal isn't perfect, the more you draw upon the Kaiubi's power, the more the seal weakens, the weaker the seal. The easier it will be for the Kaiubi to escape, by the way, you would die if the Kaiubi escapes. What? Naruto naturally exclaimed upon that piece of information. Much like a sacred gear possessor, your body and soul have adapted to its presence, if that presence leaves, your body would fail and your soul would collapse, you might live for a short time afterwards, but you'd inevitably die, Ajuka explained matter-of-factly, he then continued uncaringly, the bad news continues. The spirits explained that the Kaiubi grew greatly in power just before you appeared before young Rias, it is so strong now that it is gradually overpowering the seal, the two spirits have been running damage control, but they have a limited amount of energy, they were actually close to disappearing when I arrived, passing the information on their sealing style to me was the last straw. And they were about to disappear, luckily, I was able to use my Kankara formula to restore them, they won't last forever, but a year or two is possible, it depends on how much energy they use, by the way, you're welcome for that. For what? A confused Naruto asked. Do things, those spirits will without help you in controlling the Kaiubi later, they are also two people you will want to meet at least once, Ajuka claimed, yeah I'll figure it out later, for now let's get back to the previous topic. You said that the seal was failing, a worried Rias pointed out. Nodding, the Mayu clarified, the Kaiubi is now too powerful for the seal to contain, it is slowly weakening, it is a good thing Serzich has brought you here now, even with the work of the spirits, the seal won't last long, the spirits estimated that, even with their efforts, the seal will fail in three months. Three months, Rias repeated in disbelief. But the seal failing would mean Naruto Kunzakeno said, slowly trailing off at the end. So I got three months to live, huh? 
Naruto remarked blankly, finally he said the only thing he could think of, that sucks. Don't worry, Naruto-kun, Ria's immediately declared, grabbing his hands, she looked into his eyes intently as she told him, it doesn't matter, the evil pieces can revive someone who recently died, it will simply wait to revive you. Blinking in shock, Naruto finally smiled and said, thanks, Ria's chan you're well, you would be saving my life. Thankfully, it won't come to that, Serzich is announced, breaking his silence, throwing his arm around Ajuka's shoulder, he declared with a grin, Ajuka and I were talking about this before coming here, and we managed to figure out a way to prevent the Kaiubi from escaping. Really? How? Naruto asked in surprise. The sacred gear, Ajuka answered simply, seeing their questioning looks, he elaborated, I was struck by how similar your situation is to a person with a sacred gear, containing a magical creature of some kind, overall, the sacred gear system is superior, while the Kaiubi is more powerful than the vast majority of magical creatures, the seal used to hold it is rough compared to a sacred gear. You can draw upon its power, but it is in a raw and unrefined form, using too much would severely harm you, the seal itself is a fine piece of work, but it is now failing, the obvious solution is to raise your seal up into a sacred gear, the process would actually be quite simple, we would implant a sacred gear into you. I would then use the knowledge of sealing the spirits past to me, in order to transfer the Kaiubi into the sacred gear, problem solved. Can we even do that? Ria's quickly asked, seeing the Mayu raise an eyebrow at her, she blushed before sheepishly clarifying, I mean, could a sacred gear even handle that? Not to mention the biblical god created the sacred gear system, would he allow us to manipulate a sacred gear like that? It is fine, Ajuka answered quickly, there would be a problem if we were just trying to shove the Kaiubi into a sacred gear, the sacred gear would almost certainly break, but we would be sealing it into a sacred gear, using the sealing knowledge the spirits passed on to me, the sealing style is remarkably similar to the sealing work the biblical god used to create his heaven system. So the compatibility is good, as for the biblical god he is not an issue, while well, he created the sacred gear system within his heaven system, it runs independently, it will actually aid us, the sacred gear system is surprisingly complex and resilient, sacred gears are capable of changing, adapting, and evolving over time, either naturally, or at the desires of their wielders. As long as we do not break the sacred gear by botching the transfer process of the Kaiubi, the system will naturally stabilize the rapid influx of power into the sacred gear. Okay, but where would you get a sacred gear? They aren't exactly laying around, Ria's pointed out. Naruto quickly pitched in, and I'm not too fond of the idea of killing someone for their sacred gear, even if it is to save my own life. Don't worry, Naruto-kun, Ria's, I know a guy, Serzich is quickly claimed, turning to Naruto, he then asked, I should actually get your opinion, Naruto-kun, this is a very rare opportunity to choose your own sacred gear, what type would you want? Some sort of elemental power. A weapon. I can't guarantee well get exactly what you want, but we can at least take your desires into consideration. Naruto wasn't sure how to answer, he hadn't ever considered something like that before, well, he had considered awesome powers it would be cool to have, but he hadn't seriously considered it, just random daydreaming. Naruto quickly decided to think about it seriously, sacred gears were tremendous assets, Naruto had experienced Yudo's sword birth in their spars, and Gaspar's forbidden Baylor view was even worse, choosing well was a must, but what exactly should he choose? The image of himself shooting lasers from his eyes came to mind, but Naruto quickly threw that thought away, sacred gears rarely worked like that Naruto's main asset was his hand-to-hand -hand combat ability, he was fast, strong, and durable, Kaneko was also helping him learn martial arts, maybe a sacred gear to enhance his hand-to-hand. -hand. That was a solid choice, but Naruto could also improve himself in that field through hard work and training, did he really want to use this unique opportunity to gain something he might be able to gain on his own? It was probably smarter to ask for an unusual ability he won't be able to gain on his own, Naruto won't always be able to win by punching his opponent in the face, expanding his skill set seemed the better choice, but that still left a huge selection of choices, flying, using certain elements, illusions, etc., there were so many miscellaneous abilities, how was he going to choose just one? Jane's, Naruto finally exclaimed, immediately after speaking though, surprise overcame his features, like he hadn't even meant to say that. Jane's. Serzich's asked with a raised eyebrow. I'm not sure, Naruto admitted, scratching the back of his head, he explained, I was thinking, and suddenly I heard the sounds of chains clinking in my mind, I also have the feeling that someone really wants me to choose a sacred gear to do with chains. Rr, Naruto-kun, you're more like me than they'll ever get you to admit, Akeno spoke up, grinning at him salaciously, she continued, it seems your inner sadist is speaking up, chains, good choice, I'm more of a leather and whip girl but chains are good too, maybe I need to change my approach to you, I do have a bit of masochist in me, and that seems more compatible with your own desires. What do you say, Naruto-kun? Want to have some fun with chains with me? 
The Kano, Ria's quickly spoke up sternly, her eyes scarier than when she usually stopped Akeno's perversions. RR, but you, such scary eyes, your jealousy is showing, Akeno claimed with her eyes closed. Naruto was still discomforted by Akeno's previous words, he didn't have an inner sadist right. While the thought wasn't totally unpleasant now that he considered it, he hadn't ever had such fantasies before, what other options were there though? It wasn't like there was another person in his mind with a unique ability with chains and wanted to pass down the skill, that would be silly, but that meant Naruto really did have an inner sadist to enjoy chains, maybe Naruto just hadn't expanded his fantasies enough to realize it before, it wasn't like he had put a lot of thought into such things before. Naruto was snapped out of his quickly spiraling thoughts by Serzich's clapping and announcing, all right then, chains, I'll keep that in mind. Ajuka just sighed and announced as he walked out of the room, the plan is to implant the sacred gear in three weeks, be ready, I'll be taking my leave now, Serzich's, don't forget about the promotion as well. Oh yeah, thanks, Ajuka, Serzich's exclaimed while punching his palm, his thanks went unnoticed as Ajuka had already left, lowering his head in depression at the rude exit of his fellow Mayu, his depression vanished, smiling brightly, he announced grandiosely, congratulations, Yuzumaki Naruto-kun, I invoked a rarely used law, and Ajuka seconded it. As Mayu Lucifer I announced that once you are officially reincarnated as a devil, you shall be eligible to take the promotion test to mid-class devil. What? Ria's immediately demanded in shock, Naruto just blinked in shock. Hupping his chin, Serzich is explained with a smile, a law was created when the evil peace system was created, while well, it is typical that reincarnated devils start out as low-class devils, exceptions are allowed, specifically, when a particularly powerful or influential person is about to become a devil, it was a necessary rule in order to tempt such people into becoming devil. It actually made sense, why would highly respected people become devils if they were just going to be treated as the lowest of all devils? It was only natural that exceptions would be made. Why haven't I heard of this before? Ria's questioned skeptically. The reasons, actually, this rule was most practiced in the decades following the creation of the evil peace system, the time when most of the powerful and respected beings that were willing to become devils became devils, by now, few such people exist, usually only the youngest generation of other races are willing to become devils. Any that are older and haven't already become devils prefer not to become devils, Serzich has told them before continuing, the second reason is actually the fault of the kings, this rule can only be invoked if a member of the four great satans learns about the person before they become devils, since most kings nowadays reincarnate the person and then inform us, the rule can't be invoked. So why am I being chosen? I'm certainly not influential, and you clearly showed him not too powerful, Naruto pointed out cautiously. Serzich's gave a bitter smile before replying, I'm not the best measuring stick for judging your own strength, for a human of your age, you are absurdly powerful, that wasn't the main reason you were chosen, though, no, the main reason was that you contain this Kaiubi creature, if Ajuka states it is powerful, then it is powerful, probably Mao level, if not greater, that means something, even still. We have only given you the mid-class designation, depending on the person, they could even be a candidate for ultimate class right away, you are just too young to be considered for high class, you also have the mid-class promotion test, you still need to prove you are knowledgeable enough on devil culture to become a mid-class devil. You just get to skip the annoying adjustment period we insist on most reincarnated devils taking, I actually should apologize to you, Akeno, you are probably eligible for a promotion as well, but we are still asking that you take more time, I'm sorry if this might seem unfair to you. It is no problem, Serzich's sama, I am in no hurry to promote, Akeno quickly claimed. Great, my business is done, now I believe Riaz has some of her own business to attend to, Serzich said while clapping his hands together. I do. Ria's asked, unsure of what her brother meant. Weren't you planning to induct him into your peerage? With a plan in place to handle the Kaiubi, there is no more need to delay, Serzich's explained. Ria's gasped as she realized she had actually forgotten about that from the talks about Kaiubi, a sacred gear and promotion, Naruto had requested to join her peerage. Right here? Ria's asked, looking around the hospital room with a raised eyebrow. Serzich's shrugged before replying, why not? If I watch you won't even have to send in the official papers. All right, I guess this will work as long as you don't have a problem with it, Naruto-kun. Ria's asked. No, nah, this is fine, same end result, no matter where we do it, Naruto answered with a smile. All right, lay down and I'll start the ceremony, Ria's announced, Naruto did just that, summoning her evil piece set, Ria's looked through her remaining pieces, eight pawns, a bishop, a knight, and a rook, she chose the rook, placing it on his chest, she told him, rook would be my preference. 
Riaz waited several seconds, but nothing happened, she didn't feel the connection between Naruto and the peace forming, that meant it was a failure, the rook wasn't enough to reincarnate Naruto, Riaz had been expecting it, but it was still a shame, Naruto would have made a fantastic tank in battle, she had made sure to set aside all her pawns for this though. The rook failed, so well go to the pawns, it'll start with six, Riaz explained as she took her rook piece and replaced it with six pawns, she was fully expecting this to not be enough either much to her surprise, she felt the connection establish, she immediately whispered in shock, it looks like six pawns is enough. Really? Serzichas commented in surprise, I was actually worried eight pawns won't be enough, ten pawns was my guess. Ten pawns? Riaz asked incredulously, that was a huge cost for a single person. Serzichas nodded before explaining, yes, Naruto himself is no doubt worth three or four pawns, and the Kaiubi should be more than that, seven probably, so ten or eleven total. I see, Riaz mumbled softly as she considered that, it made sense, so what is going on? Why is Naruto-kun only worth six pawns then? My only guess would be that the evil pieces can't recognize the seal properly, they don't fully understand the bond between Naruto and the Kaiubi, Serzichas claimed thoughtfully before explaining, the evil piece system was designed to recognize the bond between a sacred gear and its possessor, to judge them as one being, they obviously recognize something is up with Naruto. But they don't seem to identify the two as a single being, it interprets them as two separate beings this is actually a good thing for you, Riaz, if the evil pieces did recognize the seal, you probably won't be able to reincarnate him. Riaz nodded in understanding at her brother's words, that was a relief, if it wasn't for a glitch in the evil pieces, she might not have been able to induct Naruto into her peerage, she briefly considered using her remaining two pawns anyway, since she had been prepared to use all of them, two additional pawns would add make him a bit more powerful, she quickly decided not to though. Naruto was already strong, and had only grow stronger over time, she should use two pawns for a small power boost, she could reincarnate a moderately powerful being with two pawns, just because she had been willing to use all eight pawns to reincarnate Naruto didn't mean she wasn't willing to take advantage of this glitch to keep two pawns for another servant. Stepping back, Riaz raised her hands, a red magic circle formed around Naruto's hospital bed as she chanted, I command thee, Yuzumaki Naruto, on my name of Riaz Grimory, become my servant, return to this land as a devil, you shall live a new life with great joy as my pawn. Naruto felt the six pawns sink into his body, it was a vaguely uncomfortable feeling, although not painful, it was like cold water was being inserted into his veins, it was quick to end though. Congratulations, Naruto-kun, you are now my new pawn, Riaz announced as she leaned over him with a gleeful smile, why not? She had been hoping for this to happen for the last nine months, gaining a person like Naruto as a servant was a huge achievement, even discarding the fact that he'll soon be gaining a sacred gear, it helped that she liked and was close to him. Thanks, Naruto grunted out as he tried to sit up, his body was feeling oddly weak, must be the change, finally managing to sit up, Naruto smiled at Riaz as he said, looks like he'll be by your side for the foreseeable future, please take care of me from now on, Riaz ch actually, how about I just call you Riaz from now on. Naruto question seemed to catch Riaz off guard, she just stared at him blankly, her mouth opening and closing, her eyes seemed to glaze over as soon as Naruto said her name, it continued to the point that Naruto was feeling thoroughly uncomfortable. Did I say something wrong? Naruto asked awkwardly. His question seemed to snap Riaz out of it, cheeks blushing, she finally stuttered out, and no, it's fine as long as I can call you Naruto as well. That's fine, Naruto quickly said, giving Riaz a bright smile, he said happily, alright, I look forward to our life together, Riaz. Me too Naruto, Riaz said, blushing at the way Naruto had phrased it. Ooh my precious Riatan is meeting boys, I'm not sure whether to be proud or cry from sadness, Serzichas muttered to himself. Bikendo herself frowned slightly, she quickly moved forward, throwing her arms around Naruto's neck and pressing her breasts into his back, she whispered in his ear, I'm feeling left out, Naruto, you never call me by my name, it's always crazy sadist, scary lady, or something of that nature, how about you call me Akeno from now on as well. Naruto was frozen from her words and the sensation of her breasts pressing into his back, luckily Riaz wasn't so distracted, pointing at her queen, she said scarily, what do you think you are doing, Akeno? Dust bonding with Naruto-kun, but you, Akeno stated with closed eyes, she then opened her eyes to stare at Riaz, there was slight anger there as she added, you aren't the only one here, Riaz, don't be selfish. Riaz clearly wasn't pleased with the response, Naruto quickly decided he did not want to be trapped between the two as he was. Serzichas just laughed at the newly reincarnated devil's conundrum, he turned and walked away as things started heating up, not his problem. Oh wait, he had to go talk to Azazel about getting a sacred gear now, damn. The sacred gear related to chains, a man repeated in surprise, he had black hair and a goatee, 
but his bangs were strangely blonde, his eyes were dark purple, a tall man, he was wearing a violet overcoat, scratching his chin in thought, he finally continued, actually, I do, the biblical god preferred his style of sealing, so there are few chain type sacred gears. About two centuries ago I did develop a prototype that would allow a person to create magical chains, I knew a lot less then, so it wasn't ever completed, I suppose I can fix it up, it'd say a week would be enough to finish it. Great, that would work perfectly, Azazel, Serzich's claimed from behind the man. No problem, Azazel claimed with a shrug, turning to Serzich's, he clarified, it would still have the issues all my artificial sacred gears do, the power output won't be completely stable, and it would only be able to work a certain number of times before it would need to be readjusted. That won't be an issue this time, I want this one input into the actual sacred gear system, Serzich's announced. Eh? Really? You know I hate doing that, Azazel exclaimed in a displeased voice. Azazel had spent centuries researching sacred gears in order to build his own, he had finally succeeded, but he still had a ways to go, a few more centuries of work needed, truthfully though, he could create proper sacred gears anytime, the sacred gear system that was part of the heaven system, created by the biblical god was self-adjusting, basically. It naturally stabilized the sacred gears it controlled, Azazel's artificial sacred gears were advanced enough that the actual system recognized them as sacred gears, as long as he added them to the system, the system would naturally fix the issues he was still working on. He hated doing it though, he hadn't parted on best terms with the biblical god, after all, surpassing his creator's achievement by perfecting his own sacred gears was one of his goals, he didn't want to piggyback his work on the work of his creator that was just lazy and not nearly as fulfilling. Sorry, but we need to make sure this sacred gear will be stable, we will be inserting a powerful creature into it, after all, Serzich's explained calmly. How powerful are we talking about? Azazel asked curiously. I'm not sure, Ajuka didn't tell me a whole lot, but definitely equal to a Mayu, it is almost certain its power is great enough to create a new Longinus, Serzich's claimed confidently. A new Longinus? Azazel repeated in surprise, turning to Serzich's, he asked seriously, you sure you want to do that? It is well known that New Longinus could appear due to sacred gears evolving, but it hasn't actually happened in over five centuries, the current thirteen have become fixed existences in the minds of the different factions, a new one appearing now could really shake things up. Maybe the world needs to be shaken up, Serzich suggested, gesturing at Azazel, Serzich continued, think about it, I can come ask you for one of your artificial sacred gears without issue, but our subordinates are still fighting throughout the world, none of the three factions want to restart the Great War, but peace still eludes us, if that is the current world. Then it'll gladly help set in motions to change it, and new Longinus appearing would suffice. Strong words, but are you really so confident about it? things might just get worse, a lot would depend on this kid you are talking about, do you really trust him to such a degree that Yao would willingly place him into a position of immense power? Azizel asked critically. Serzich's just smiled before replying nonchalantly, I trust Ria's, plus, he impressed me, a 14-year-old human punching me in the face, I'd like to think that's a feat worthy of praise. He punched you in the face, ha, I like this kid already, Azazel declared while laughing, dying down to chuckles, he told Serzich's, come back in two weeks, a week to complete the sacred gear, and a week to modify it to be added to the system, I'm also reserving the right to name it. Thanks, Azazel. I like it when things stay interesting, interesting things always happen around powerful people, a new Longinus appearing will surely make the future enjoyable for me, an old man like me has the right to watch the young go through trouble while laughing my ass off, Azazel claimed with a naughty grin. Thanks for watching.